So it doesn't matter whether this is what bin Laden's motivation is. It matters that this is what gets people to join him. And Michael Scheuer, the former chief of the CIA's bin Laden unit, also pointed out that the Ayatollah Khomeini in the 1980s used to rail against American culture, mini skirts and rock music and, and all the terrible things about uh, you know, our uh, freedom that he didn't like. And nobody cared. He wasn't able to rally a single suicide bomber to come to America to kill Americans because we're free, because of our loose morals even, that we get away with because of all of our freedom. And yet Osama bin Laden, when he cites six specific policies, uh, is able to do uh, a real good job. I also want to mention Robert A. Pape from the University of Chicago, who wrote a book called Dying to Win, where he showed mathematically, after studying every suicide bomber on Earth between 1980 and 2004, that particularly the Al-Qaeda bombers are 10 times more likely to come from a country with American combat forces in it than not. And in fact, the exceptions were guys who, for example, were born in Yemen but then raised in Kuwait or something like that. It is uh, a mathematical certainty that occupation, and in fact, we should put ourselves in their shoes. Shouldn't we try to argue the other point of view for a change? How would we like it if the Muslim world had, oh, I don't know, for the last 50 years been propping up dictators in our American states and building military bases in our counties? Well, I'm from Texas, and I'll tell you exactly what we do. It's exactly what you know we would do. We would shoot at them until they were all gone. And if we were unable to do so, if we had to, we'd probably swim across the Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea to launch an attack in their capital city. Thank you, Mr. Horton. We have time for one last question. Mr. Horton, you mentioned earlier very briefly American support for Israel. And since this question has been largely ignored in this debate, I would like to ask both of you, what do you feel American policy towards Israel should be in today's world? We'll start with Mr. Horton this time. Three minutes. I think the best policy is neutrality. Um, the reason that Hamas is the most powerful group in Palestine now is because the Israelis, with American financial help, created Hamas to be a counter to the uh, Kami, they didn't call them Islamic terrorists then, they were the Kami PLO. Remember, I don't know if it was Islam that motivated Arafat or not. Here I thought he was a secular Marxist atheist. But anyway, uh, our government, the Israeli government, helped to create Hamas to be a counter to the PLO, which they were no angels either. But, uh, you know, the bottom line here is that this is not our country's business. And what we're doing, in fact, is, is directly violating the sound advice of George Washington in his farewell address, which still stands. And what he said roughly was that when you form entangling alliances with other people's countries, then you make enemies out of their enemies who weren't necessarily your enemies. And then you end up in your own domestic politics, uh, different factions who favor different uh, uh, powers overseas uh, end up uh, with too much uh, influence in American life. And basically what we've done is we've abandoned uh, the advice that our founders gave us to stay out of entangling alliances and to stay out of the old world's troubles. And we've entered into this cycle of intervention that just begets intervention and begets intervention. And I believe that if the Israelis uh, simply had to pay their own way, they might, not, they might have to buy their own health care instead of having socialized health care, and they might have to pay for their own school instead of having Americans pay their way to school, but I think that they could guarantee their own security just fine and I think that it would do a lot to make Americans safer. Terry McDermott, who is a LA Times reporter, wrote a book called Perfect Soldiers, and it's a biography of the hijackers, not the Saudi muscle guys that were brought in at the last minute, but the hijackers. And in that, in that book, uh, Perfect Soldiers, he explains how these guys would sit around in their, uh, in their Hamburg, Germany apartment and talk about how they wanted to kill Americans because of what Israel had done that day. And now, of Again, just to be perfectly clear, I'm certainly not supporting their point of view. I'm just saying that was the motivation. The guy that flew the plane into the tower, that screamed, ah, all the way into that tower, he didn't hate us because we were free. He hated us for at least perceived injustices committed by this government in that part of the world. As long as we continue to pretend that they hate us for how good we are, uh, we're in serious trouble. Dr. Kushner, three minutes. Could have you believe that uh, the Israelis created Hamas and that um, the United States helped in that, and that's just a bold-faced lie. 
that, that it's not, not, not an issue. It never happened that way. Uh, certainly, um, Israel is the only true democracy in that region in the world, the only uh, one who could be counted on to be the United States' ally in the greater Middle East. Uh, they've proven that uh, throughout the last four or five decades since they've been uh, a, a country. The United States has an obligation, as I said when we began this debate, uh, to support democracy and to support beacons of light worldwide. And Israel is one such um, country. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, the debater talks about reading secondhand information, quoting Mr. Shoy, who I disagree with dramatically, uh, because I too have been an analyst uh, on Al Qaeda. And quite frankly, uh, it's great when you, get your, when you get your information from newspapers or from the radio or from some libertarian analyst. But let me tell you what the facts are on, in, the, in this case. Um, ben Laden didn't even care about Israel's existence. Uh, ben Laden began to use Israel as a ploy to whip up people who had certain feelings about the state of Israel and who had certain anti-Semitic feelings, to use that as a wedge. Uh, ben Laden even talked about in some of his videos that he released to Al Jazeera about the American election. But they're very clever. They have public relation firms. Uh, these are very measured statements that, that are made year in and year out. Um, Clearly, Israel needs to be supported. Any country that will take up the cudgels to support the United States and mirror its society like the United States is indeed a friend of the United States and, and, and also friend of democracy and liberty uh, throughout the world. Uh, we need to be strong in its support. Um, gentleman didn't mention that we, I guess he would argue, and I, I shouldn't argue for him, but we give as much aid we do to Egypt. We give aid to Egypt. And let me ask you something. The, the money that goes and pours into Egypt, where does that money go? If you've ever been to Egypt, Egypt's one of the most poorest countries in the world. Just like the PLO got a significant amount of funding from the United States. Where did that money go? That money went into France into buying high-class clothing for Arafat's wife. So the point is, the proof's in the pudding. The money that goes to Israel, even if it's suggested, and that's not true, that it goes into health care and it goes to educating kids or sending kids to school. Think about that as Americans, of the use of foreign aid as opposed to the use of the Barrack government and where that money goes or the use when American money poured into the PLO or pours into any other region of the world. Make no mistake about it. Israel is looked upon as a little Satan because it's a mirror image of the United States. And thank God that we have mirror images of the United States in different regions of the world, because when you go to bed at night or when you went to work on 9-11, you didn't have to fear that Israel was going to fly planes into a building. Please join me in thanking our debaters. Thank you again for all coming out. If you would like more information about YCT or joining our chapter, please see our table uh, out in the front and take some materials. Have a good evening. we'd like to get some pictures with the speakers. Thank you.